What's up? This is Rebel Radio. What up? What up? This is DJ Newmark. This is Peanut Butter Wolf. It's your boy. It's okay. Keep checking out Rebel Radio. Rebel Radio. This is Rebel Radio. We're in the place right here. Uh-huh. Rebel Radio is going down. Would you say Rebel Radio? Oh, wait. Let's do it again. Rebel Radio. What's up, Rebels? Back again. This is, this is a special one. I don't want to hype it up too much because, as you know, we're all about low expectations here. But uh, this is a very special Rebel Radio recorded on site at the world premiere, the Los Angeles, bigger than the world, the Los Angeles premiere of the Stretch Armstrong and Bobito movie. And my guests today are Stretch Armstrong and Bobito. If you don't know them, they were the hosts of the Stretch Armstrong and Bobito radio show throughout the 90s and it was a uh it was a groundbreaking show they're going to talk a little bit about that and otherwise you'll have to check the movie i believe it's streaming on demand on vimeo uh but it was a groundbreaking show they had freestyles and surprise guests every week the show ran in the middle of the night from a college radio station in new york and you know there was no internet back then so the way we found out about it on the west coast was people would would stay up late make cassette tapes and send them to friends all over the world and we used to get cassettes that you know somebody knew somebody that would make a tape of stretch and bobito and um you know you were hearing uh a lot of times unsigned or rappers that just weren't big yet uh from jay-z to biggie to big l to Cypress Hill, to, you know, everybody that was anybody in hip hop at the time, at least on the East Coast, you know, went through there and tried to make their mark. The show was funny and quirky and they they did all kind of, you know, they just didn't take themselves too seriously. And because of that, they became legends. You've probably seen Bobito in Nike commercials. You know, he's gone on to be kind of an ambassador of, of hip hop and basketball and sneaker culture. Stretch Armstrong is still one of the most important DJs, uh, tastemakers that there's been. And so I'm really excited to talk to them and to get into a little bit about the film. This is a short episode, so if you don't have your usual hour to devote to spending time with Rebel Radio, you can get it in in uh, 20-something minutes. doing this i appreciate it word up thanks for having us this how is... powerful is your mic it catches we don't have to go no, like this my mic's on no, fire, fire, yeah. fire 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 <laughs> exactly yeah. we, we I got the, the power effects. mic the power mic so wait so we're gonna interview you you are, no, are we I'm on i'm interviewing you no no we're gonna turn this around you're josh i'm josh and stretch mentioned that you started herb no i didn't start it but i was i was there for a long time i was an editor i ran marketing I tell people you started it. I appreciate I just, that. I, just, I feel like it's, it sounds better. It sounds great. No, because Herb Magazine in 1997 awarded us uh, best um, radio in the world by virtue of a reader survey. Yeah. And my label in the same survey won best best indie indie label. Um, nice. I had my um, fondle imprint. So uh, so when he told me Herb, I was like, oh, word. All right, cool. We got to do this. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we did a party together. It might have been that year. We came to New York, I think it was New Music Seminar, and there was a party, and it was the Stretch and Bobito show with our magazine. I forget where it was, but it was a thing when um, uh, all of a sudden the cops were like cracking down on clubs and they decided to check everybody's ID at the mm-hmm. door. I don't know if y'all remember that. I don't, but it was. And like nobody got in. And we had like, <laughs> you guys great, hooked great up the party. lineup. It was like Wu Tang was performing. I forget who else, or somebody from Wu Tang, uh-huh. and like and like hundreds of people couldn't get in because nobody carries ID in New York. It turns ah, out, ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. You That's know, in L.A., way. we always carry ID because you have to drive. Sure, um, it's Giuliani era. I'm yeah, sure. right. Yeah. That's the uh, those are the, the ancient cabaret laws that that That's he right. was enforcing. That's right. Yeah. But hey, we're here to talk about the movie. Mm-hmm. I'm excited to see it any minute now. Um, for those listening, we're recording live on site, and so there's noise in the background, and we're here in the dungeon. <laughs> but um, tell me why, you know, after you've been off radio for so long uh, and off doing other projects, why this movie now? Well, um, our show started October 25th, 1990, 
And when we decided to make this film in 2014, there was an impetus to, to complete production by October 2015. And and ambitious, cool. Yeah, impetus. ambitious, <laughs> yeah. ambitious. Um, but we made it, you know, and yeah. uh, by the good graces of our Kickstarter backers and, you know, everybody par uh, part of the uh, production team and, you know, just everybody who committed uh, to digging through their personal archives to provide archival footage and photos and, you know, the film releases October 22nd, three days shy of our actual radio 25th nice. anniversary. Yeah. And um, we're in theaters uh, starting October 1st. And so it's a really joyous occasion. And, you know, the other reason was that we knew that, you know, I'm an active DJ, Stretch is an active DJ, that we could get some screenings, some premieres in, in cities and come and be present for Q&As and really interact with the community. For sure. Uh, the new one who didn't know who, who we were and the ones who experienced it mm -hmm. and you know would reminisce and also be able to dj and, and just engage and so it's like the the illest like marketing plan that you could imagine because you know we created this cali tour you know it's 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 us booking you mm -hmm. know mm -hmm. these theaters with with yeah. uh promote local promoters big up to assad in la footlong development who was instrumental in and in, in make really being like the point guard to make this happen mm -hmm. And what are you hoping people are going to take from the movie? <laughs> I, you know, Bob, Bob directed it. I co-produced it. Music, uh -huh. music supervised it. Um, so uh, I, I've played, uh, I would say, an, integral, an inter integral role, but still, nonetheless, more of a supportive role. Sure. Um, one of the things that, that has been really interesting in this whole process is how even though Bob has tried to, to make this our story, it's still through his lens. Mm -hmm. And it's fascinating for me. So the, takeaway that, that, the takeaways that I'm getting from it have, have, are incredible. I mean, I'm, I've, been, I've learned so much about my own story. Um, yeah. And it's just, I'm really enjoying that. Um, in a way that maybe um, I wouldn't if I directed it or co-directed it. So I'm, I'm really, I'm, I'm very, I'm just, I'm psyched on that That's level. Cool. Um, in terms of uh, what other people might take away from it, um, I mean, there's there's so many, there's so much. I mean, there's there's our story. Um, there's uh, um, we just did an interview just just now, and I was talking about how I, I hope that uh, this film can reach beyond our core crowd, beyond the core hip hop crowd, and mm -hmm. reach reach an audience that might certainly know what hip hop is because it's a global sure. commercial phenomenon. But it would be uh, amazing for people to to really appreciate the the intelligence and dedication and and the craft of the artists and the music that we supported, which mm -hmm. is um, you know which is part of a, an era that is that is gone. It was a you know it's almost a fleeting moment now right. in hindsight. You know you know between you know eighty five and ninety five and and you know a little bit on the other sides of mm -hmm. both those bookmarks. It was this magical time in, in music, which. If you're not an insider, you might not really appreciate in the way that I think this film might might enable you to. Yeah. And I think, you know, in a very simple way, we just want to entertain people. Like, mm -hmm. a lot of documentaries are very serious. You know, <laughs> uh, you're going to laugh in yeah. this film. Yes. We're goofy. You know, this, we broke a lot of rules in filmmaking. Um, you know, as a director, you know, had, took a lot of liber liberty um, to just be quirky and mm -hmm. just to to deliver something that what people would expect from us because that's how our radio show was. But also there's a lot of curveballs in the film that yeah. people won't ex anticipate whatsoever. <laughs> so we're, we can't wait for everyone to see it worldwide. That's cool. So talk about the, the show for a minute because you guys, you know, the show was, was landmark, you know, groundbreaking show for, for hip hop culture. And, you know, we learned about it through cassettes, you know, on the West Coast. And I know that got all over the world. You know, the, the hood the hood internet <laughs> not the hood internet but the hood internet uh, yes I actually know what you're I know what you're you referring know. to <laughs> but um, but you, but it, it also happened at a time when there was a lot of great DJs especially in New York playing hip hop on the radio right and you come from a, a legacy mm -hmm. you know uh, from from Red Alert to to Funk Flex, to, you know, there, there was good music happening at the time. Mm -hmm. What made your show different? I think uh, 
as on-air personalities, we didn't try to be anybody but ourselves. Mm -hmm. um, and we both came from a very different perspective. Uh, um, and, you know, in that I, went, I attended Wesleyan University, a liberal arts college, which was at Columbia. Um, you know, he grew up on the Upper West Side on 96th Street. East, I grew up, East, I'm East. sorry, Upper East Side on 96th Street. I grew up on the Upper West Side on 97th Street. So, okay. you know, this is these converging communities, you know, very multiracial, multicultural background, uh, uh, colorblind, if you will, in, mm -hmm. in, in the presentation. Um, and I think ultimately the base was just to, to create a really good cassette that we could listen to the next day, yeah. as, as innocent as it was. Yeah. And so we didn't care if the artist was signed or unsigned or you know, platinum or whatever. We just invited the best artist and Stretch played the best music. And I tried to find the best demos. Mm -hmm. um, and that's, that's, how it, 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 that's how it got carved out. The right. show was never a vehicle for any kind of ambition other than to make a great show. Mm -hmm. So we weren't, obviously we, we knew people at labels. When I met Bob, he was working at Def Jam. He was in the industry. We knew people in the industry. We, we befriended mm -hmm. people in the, in the industry. But it was never, um, we were never part of that, that, that game. Right. We, um, and, and thankfully, labels got that. Promoters got that. They didn't really pressure us. They were like, here are the records. Do what you're going to do with them. Yeah. But it was never about, oh, right, we got the show, let's leverage that into something else. It was, the show was the end. Mm -hmm. That was what we mm -hmm. wanted. Yeah. Just a, an perfect. incredible listening experience. And, um, you know, week in, week out for, for many years. Yeah, yeah. So going back to the hood internet, you know, part of what made the show magical, for those of us, again, not in New York, is that you had to find it. You had to, you know, you kind of had to know about you had to, it. You had to dig for it. Absolutely. It was like digging. Yeah. So, you know, uh, thinking about the way it is today with, with the internet, um, you know, how does that, how does that change the discovery of stuff like that? And could, could, could something like your show happen today? No, I absolutely don't think. And we've been asked this question time, every time. And time this and time is, this again. Is the, this is the one um, common thread. Is that right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Every yeah. interview, yeah. But um, I, I we'll, think we'll just strike it then. Yeah. <laughs> no, <laughs> you want to be different. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Exactly. Now, um, you know, I think uh, accessibility in hip hop uh, has been helpful. You know, in some ways, but in another way, it's not always a good thing. And yeah. the best hip hop. Not just hip hop, music, mm -hmm. music in general. Yeah, I mean, music in general, but I'm saying it just, I mean, if you look at like the graffiti movement of mm -hmm. the 70s, I mean, it was at its best when the trains were inaccessible right. and, you right know, right there took a lot of effort. Uh, you know, the music was the best when it took the producers a lot of effort to find that rare one of 100 sample, right. you know, record. Um, and it took a lot of effort to listen to us, you know, and tape it and share the tape and dub it. and. Yeah. We felt special. There was a bond there, mm -hmm. and uh, so with the accessibility, it's, that changes the dynamic, and so it, it can't happen again because unless the internet just dies, and then we have to go backwards right. in, 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 uh, in technology. But sure, so kill the internet basically. No, I mean, and it's, uh, it's been sorry. kind. No, I, th I, I think. Listen, it's you know. First of all, the question is 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 uh, it's about convenience. Um, but at the end of the day, you know what, what we did was we did all the hard, we did the heavy lifting for you. Mm -hmm. So we, you know, record shopping, going to record labels, and and just sort of distilling everything that we could pull out of the ether: tapes, demos, remixes, dub plates, uh, promos, going to the store to buy records that were distributed from regional. Uh, you know, creators of music, whether it was in you know Texas or California, and we yeah. put it together into two tapes on a Thursday night. Right. Um, now, you know, I think it, it's it's really on the individual. If they're really curious about searching, they can because of the internet, and mm -hmm. you can search the whole world. Um, but there's no, you know, there's no, there, there there are fewer, I think, very special places that you can go to where where you have that kind of, um, I don't know curation mm -hmm. and um yeah and taste taste is taste is a huge part of it so i'm glad you say that uh we had mike b on the show a few weeks back yes and um, the mike b the mike b and uh you know we always ask our guests about their mentors and your name came out first 
obviously, because uh, you, you put him in the game. And, you know, I asked him what, he, what you taught him, what he learned from you, and he said, I learned how to be a tastemaker. And, um, and, you know, he said, you guys are the ultimate tastemakers uh, doing your thing. And so how does that work, and, and how do you carry that over? How does that play out today for what you're doing? Well, Bob has a radio station, <laughs> so yep. you can't actually uh, take part in his in the expression of his taste via the internet. You want to say what that? What yeah, that it's is? at uh, coolboblove.com, spelled mm -hmm. with a K. Mm -hmm. So it's on a TuneIn app. I got listeners in over 200 countries, which is cool. Um, and my taste, with a K. my <laughs> my taste uh, back then and now, consistent. Um, play a lot of world music, jazz, soul, uh, funk, some rare and some very well known, but mm -hmm. always trying to, uh, you know, find those, uh, those lanes of music that not everyone is, is listening to yeah. and help expose it. Yeah. I've, since, since I actually really enjoyed getting off the radio in 2001, um, because it allowed me to, to do whatever I wanted to do, um, in terms of playing other kinds of music. I was I felt really pigeonholed mm -hmm. in the 90s because my musical tastes always were always more broad than what I did on the radio. Sure. I just was doing a hip hop show. Right. Um, and I've had, you know, many love affairs with with different genres that I've picked up, some of them I've dropped, some of them them I've I've maintained a relationship with. Um, but but throughout all my sort of different different phases it's always been with the same ears and mm -hmm. that's really what it comes down to I just like what I like and mm -hmm. I've never I've never you know thought oh I, I shouldn't like that because people don't know me for that or I'm, I'm, I mean I was the guy playing playing Led Zeppelin records and at the tunnel in like 1994 right. people were like what the fuck is this guy doing yeah so this is you know so what excites you now musically um that, that's a hard question to ask without looking at my my computer because it's <laughs> it's it's really all over the place and yeah. and you know one week I might be you know listening to eighties hip hop or like you know going through um, just scouring the internet for for rare roots reggae records or or I mean it's just it's all over the place mm -hmm. and and. Uh, and that's you know that's that's one of the that's one of the joys of, of having an, an open mind and right. and and that's and that's what the fuck is going on right here. <laughs> so Bob, I know you you kind of took uh, your influence into other areas, and I think in some ways we're, we're responsible for helping spread hip hop culture beyond music, right into sneakers, into sports, and you know bringing that. Uh, you know, I think from day one, we've always said hip hop is a, it's a lifestyle, it's an attitude. It's, you know, goes way beyond music, but, but you really brought that to life in a lot of ways. Um, now, you know, I think when we look at, at culture, we just see hip hop's influence on pop culture on a worldwide scale, but it feels very different than uh, when it was kind of its own little subculture. Does that, does yeah. that make sense? Mm -hmm. um, so how does that play out in terms of what you're doing um. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's a really broad question yeah um, so I guess I mean like you you know reel it in a little bit so the, the, you were kind of that voice the, I see it as uh, I like this I'm getting coaching real time <laughs> in, in radio that's good man we need it um, but you know you brought that that sort of hip hop voice into the shoe game into mm -hmm. into sports right that wasn't necessarily there. Uh, and you're still involved in those things, right? So I guess what I'm asking is, has your perspective changed now that it's not like uh, this foreign concept to have kind of a hip hop attitude about basketball or whatever? Yeah, um, I, you know, let me say this. I mean, when it comes to playground basketball, I mean, it, it's actually influenced hip hop more than hip hop has influenced it. So it's, it's uh, you know, when it comes to sneakers, for example, like all the, the best basketball sneakers became iconic hip-hop staples, you know, mm -hmm. like the, the superstar. Before 
hip hop, mm -hmm. sure. you know, decided like, oh, this is a cool sneaker. The basketball community was wearing it. Yeah. Um, and in terms of like, you know, just baggy shorts and that whole look, that's basketball aesthetic before it was hip hop as well. Um, and uh, so, I mean, you know, I am who I am. I mean, I'm born in 1966, grateful for that. I've experienced a lot of different decades, a lot of culture, I've traveled to 39 countries, six continents at this point. You know, I'm grateful for what me and Stretch presented in the 90s as, as that opened up a door to a, a lot of uh, things. Um, you know, I did 40 Nike commercials in the, in the 1990s. Mm -hmm. Part of that was, you know, I was that voice in New York for the hip hop community and they wanted to, to, to lend that to what they were doing with their marketing for basketball and, and it worked. Yeah. Um, so I benefited in a lot of ways. Uh, so, but at the same time, you know, my hip hop personality doesn't completely define me, mm -hmm. you know? Um, and so it's weird to me, like when people come to hear me play and I'm playing Omar and Elements of Life and, uh, you know, Uh, I don't know, whoever, uh, Bronx River Parkway. And, you know, people are like, oh, you know, you like this now. And I'm like, no, I like this back then too. Right. You know, and I was playing this stuff back then in the 90s as well. But yeah. I just got known for hip hop, but that's <laughs> never been the, the only side of me. Mm -hmm. so. mm -hmm. Ditto. Nice. Poli poli politic politic ditto. ditto. <laughs> I mean, okay, well, I know we're almost out of time. We got to get to see this movie. Great. Um, so, you know, Rebel Radio, our show is really about entrepreneurship in, in DJ culture and in, in hip hop and in the underground culture period. And so, uh, you know, when we do the full length interview, we get really into that and how you build your career out of doing what you love. Mm -hmm. but, um, but maybe you could just kind of tell us, how have you guys made the partnership work? I mean, you, you essentially have had a business that's lasted decades yeah. with some breaks, but um, how, how does that work? Well, hmm. um, I'll just speak on that because this is my second film. My first one was doing in the park, pick up basketball NYC, which was co-directed by Kevin Coolio. Yep. Um, and that was a DIY project to the fullest. Um, you know, backpacks with basketballs, release forms, mm -hmm. and cameras going 180 courts. Wow. And that experience showed me that, you know, I don't need Sony Picture Classics or Magnolia Focus, all these phenomenal uh, companies that I, I love their their releases to do a film and um, Omar Acosta who's our producer on this project approached me after seeing doing in the park was like yo you should do a film about your stretches radio show hit him up he loved the idea was enthusiastic like to the point like I was ecstatic at his reaction and knew that we could milk that enthusiasm for a year and a half to make the film um, but this film, just like my first one, is you know a product of supreme entrepreneurial endeavor, and that you know stretches stretch and I, Omar, and one other party are the owners of the film. Yeah. We own the copyright to the film, yeah. and we're also like you know raise fund through Kickstarter blessing, and you know but put up our own hard cash, and you know we're booking the, the theaters, and you know our relationships amongst the four of us are creating you know, a Vimeo on-demand exclusive digital release October 22nd. Um, oh, cool. you know, our relationships are creating press interviews and you know, so we're using uh, our entrepreneurial mind and our marketing experience uh, to the fullest uh, to make this film pop worldwide. Although, interestingly, Bob and I have a very limited entrepreneurship relationship. In the 90s, we did the radio together, mm -hmm. but outside of the radio, we did very different things. Sure. Um, and, but somehow this, this, this project has just really, really worked. I mean, we are very different people, but I think in some ways um, it works like that. I mean, we sort of, the, the, the love and, the, and the, the joy that we, we experience together as friends, vis-a-vis vis vis the music, but just as, as friends is, um, hasn't diminished over the years so um, and that doesn't necessarily mean that that we can do good business together but um, right. we're, but, kill, we're killing it but it's just been it's we're just not, everything is is clicking yeah. lovely it's been ridiculous yeah
That's dope. So yeah. Thank you, bro. Yeah, thanks, man. I appreciate it. Uh-huh. Thank you. Right. Next time you're in LA, come back and do the full show. Yeah, absolutely. We'd love to have you. Cool. I got to get downstairs and go do it. Yeah, that was the Stretch Armstrong and Bobito show from WKCR, I think was what it was called. I don't really know. I might have made that up. And uh, I hope you'll see the movie. I hope you will tune in next week to Rebel Radio and hit us on Twitter at Rebel Radio Net. Tell us how much you love our show, the Stretch and Bobito show. Tell us how much you love anything. I don't care what it is. I just want to know what you love. Later.